Okay, so in today's uh, lecture, I want to talk a little bit about the floating algae island that Pi uh, discovers uh, when he's on the life raft. Um, and he discovers this floating algae island that's, you know, it's one of those bizarre occurrences in the novel that uh, if you didn't doubt Pi's story before, maybe at this point you started to just think, you know, uh, maybe you saw start to started seeing uh, Pi as less reliable as a narrator, or maybe you were just believed in you know the possibility that you know there's a lot in the world that we don't understand or don't know about, uh, especially when you're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, so this could be a natural occurrence that we just have not realized existed until this point, um, and you believe Pi's uh, story. So. It does. It is one of those events that's bizarre, but uh, you know, still believable in the context of Pi's very realistic kind of story. Um, but I do think we need to talk more about the kind of meaning or symbolism that could be implied in this island. And it's a little bit of a mystery. Like I don't know exactly what um, our author Jan Martel is trying to sort of convey. Uh, in this symbol, so it's largely, you know, subjective how you interpret uh, some of the symbolism of this island because I think it is very kind of ambiguous and mysterious uh, what this island is doing in Pi's story. But there are some things or little hints that might give us, um, you know, clues as to what um, Jan Martel is trying to convey about Pi's journey and what this part of his journey might mean. Um, so if we could look at some theories or ideas related to the island and maybe uh, it'll become more clear. So uh, basically our island is free, free floating, freestanding uh, algae island and there's no sand or dirt on it, but it does have these kind of trees uh, that Pi uh, will sleep in and under. There's also a colony of, it sounds like millions of uh, meerkats, very cute little, you know, animals that live in little colonies. And uh, of course, this is going to be a feast for Richard Parker. Um, when he uh, climbs on top of the island. Pi is also sort of in his heaven, vegetarian heaven, because there's the whole island is made up of this sweet tasting algae uh, that he can eat um, and it's you know crispy and fresh and it's you know as a vegetarian it uh, sort of is everything he would want in a vegetable. Um, so he's he's getting healthier uh, and stronger day by day, as is Richard Parker, who, once he gets starting to eat all the meerkats, he grows stronger. So it does come at a very sort of low point in both of their experiences when they find this algae island. So they're both bi basically dying of starvation and dehydration and are very, very weak. Um, very uh, on their last legs and then it's almost as if the island is kind of uh, a second life for them uh, so they're given a kind of um, stay of death so they instead of dying they enter or they go to this island um, and at first Pi can't believe his eyes you know he thinks it's a mirage that you might have like a hallucination um, after so many days at sea, it's possible that his mind is weak and then he can't fully comprehend uh, the island at first. Uh, but then he realizes that, you know, this is in fact a bizarre, natural uh, island that he has stumbled upon and it's unlike anything he's ever seen before in the natural world. Um, so in a story about religion, we can kind of start seeing possibly some themes or ideas related to Pi's survival or religion. Uh, he does say certain things like um, he'll use some religious metaphors uh, to describe the island. Um, so first he thinks it's um, he 
He likes the color of it. So he says, since the green or the since the trees continue to stand, I continue to look. To take in green after so much blue was like music to my eyes. Green is a lovely color. It is the color of Islam. It is my favorite color. Uh, so he will bring up uh, Islam or religion, his religion, uh, when seeing the island and what it could represent for him um, as something beautiful. It's almost like a dream come true. In each step he takes onto the island, he like praises God, right? Because this is his salvation or this is what he believes has saved his life um, is coming across land. So he's he praises God over and over again. Uh, cannot believe uh, his uh, luck that he has found his salvation. Page 289, uh, the presence of the tree is kind of interesting. Um, he does say, uh, a tree, a tree is a blessedly thing, good thing to behold when you've been in lost at sea for a long, long time. I sang the tree's glory, its solid, unhurried purity, its slow beauty. Oh, that I could be like it, rooted to the ground, but with my ha every hand raised up to God in praise, I wept. Uh, as, I, as my heart exalted Allah, my mind began to take in information about Allah's works. The tree did indeed grow right out of the algae, as I had seen from the lifeboat. This was not the, there was not the least trace of soil. Either there was a soil deep down, or the species of tree was a remarkable instance of a commensal or a parasite. So it does sort of look like the, the, this island is going to be his salvation. It's going to save him from death. Uh, and he credits God or Allah uh, for giving him this gift. Um, and it's going to be, you know, his saving grace. Uh, the tree itself, if you think about, you know, trees uh, in a religious sense, he does see them as being sort of raised up closer to God. But if you can think about, you know, your own knowledge of uh, religious studies, the tree is kind of important uh, in biblical stories. Um, so if you think about the tree of knowledge uh, in the Garden of Eden, there could be some connotations related to that story um, what, with Pi arriving on the Algae Island. So in that biblical story, you know, Adam and Eve uh, ate from the tree of knowledge and this brought about their demise or, you know, that they would now be punished for eating from the sacred tree that they weren't supposed to eat from. Uh, and they now know that they have knowledge now that of the hardships in the world um, and are expelled from Eden or from paradise following this moment of gaining knowledge, doing something they weren't supposed to do. So we will get a kind of parallel narrative, I think, with Pi eating from or opening the fruit from this tree uh, that he sees on the island and then making a discovery that will lead to him leaving the island. Uh, so I do think there's a little bit of parallel parallel here with the biblical story of Eden. So this island, almost like the Garden of Eden, appears to be, uh, you know, completely paradise. It's a utopia for both Pi and Richard Parker. They have more than abundant food to eat. There's fresh water. Uh, in large pools on the island that they can drink and bathe in. And there's enough, yeah, they they're, they can eat to their heart's content uh, and both become strong and healthy again. So it is like a second life for them. But not is not everything is as it seems. And this will become apparent that on the surface this looks like paradise, but sort of buried within it, there are clues or hints that not everything is as it seems uh, on this island. So the paradise is more of an illusion after all, once we realize that this Alge Island is not an innocent Alge Island. It has a sort of ulterior motives, um, and we'll discover that alongside Pi when he realizes the mysteries uh, on the island. So the meerkat colony 
is an interesting characteristic of the island. So there are millions and millions of little meerkats uh, living on the island. So with them, Pi kind of finds, you know, just little furry friends to be, you know, his companions while on the island. So he does have some entertaining uh, cohabitants of the island along with Richard Parker. Uh, and they sneak, sleep with him and snuggle up with Pi when he sleeps up in the trees. Um, and then Richard Parker has meerkats to eat as many as he would want, more than he can even eat. Uh, but the description of the meerkats uh, is also interesting. So there's a description. Uh, they're very innocent, right? These creatures, they don't even recognize Richard Parker as a predator, so they just volunteer to get eaten, basically. Uh, 295. Uh, Pi is sort of describing the millions of meerkats. Uh, so their interest in me was short-lived. After a few seconds, they went back to doing what they had been doing before I appeared, which was either nibbling at the algae or staring into the ponds. To see so many bending down at the same time reminded me of prayer time in a mosque. The creatures seemed to feel no fear as I moved down from the ridge. None shied away or showed the least tension at my presence. Um, if I had wanted to, I could have simply touched one, even picked one up. I did nothing of the sort. I simply walked into what was surely the largest colony of meerkats in the world, one of the strangest, most wonderful experiences of my life. So that description was a little interesting uh, in the fact that, you know, he does use a kind of religious imagery for the meerkats. So he was saying that they all sort of looked like... Um, believers uh, at a mosque praying uh, so they when they all sort of look in unison or behave in unison it it strikes Pi as being an interesting visual and it rely, re reminded him of you know religion um, and how people follow certain practices and uh, so the the meerkats were kind of living symbiotically with the island so this is kind of a biological phenomenon that also fi fascinates Pi because on this island everything is kind of working in unison. Um, we have the algae island, the freshwater pools, the meerkats, all and even these trees all kind of living off one another, um, living together on this island. So there's sort of this symbiotic uh, cohabitation going on between species of animals and the strange uh, green vegetation. And then things start becoming a little bit uh, more mysterious. So Pi talks about how incomprehensible it was that you know all these fish started showing up in these large pools of fresh water. Um, so he has to figure out you know where are these fish coming from and why are they dying? Um, so the why are they dying part was pretty obvious. So they uh, are obviously saltwater fish coming into fresh water. So that's how they would die. Uh, but he also notices that every at nighttime there would be a uh, all the fish would show up in the freshwater ponds. Even a shark uh, shows up. And then by morning, all those fish would be gone, disappeared. And Pi can't really explain what's going on. He knows the meerkats don't go down at nighttime, uh, so they aren't the ones dragging out the fish, although that's what they do if there's any in the daytime that come up. They do eat the, the fish. Um, but we... Uh, we start wondering or questioning, questioning along with Pi, what the mystery of this island uh, is. At this time as well, Pi starts to worry about Richard Parker becoming more wild again because he's kind of resorting to being stronger and and more, you know, carnivorous again. Uh, his predator ways are back again now that he can kill as many meerkats as he wants. So Pi fears that, you know, what's going to happen? Is Richard Parker still going to obey me? Is he still going to respect my authority? Or is he going to just be a carnivore and rip me apart? So Pi 
uh, starts going back to his circus trainer ways to train Richard Parker uh, and maintain his sense of mastery over Richard Parker while on the island. And in fact, it, he gets to such a, you know, a point of mastery that he has Richard Parker trained to jump through hoops. Uh, so again, this is one of those things that's, you know, is Pi stretching the truth at this point of his story? What, what is he, is this, are we legitimately supposed to believe that he's got a wild tiger sort of jumping through hoops? Uh, but this could just be, you know, part of the magic of this island is that, you know, everything seems to be working really well. Uh, and on the surface seems almost like, you know, a paradise. Everybody's getting along, everybody's healthy, health, everybody's happy. And there doesn't seem to be any uh, kind of harm or danger uh, for Richard Parker or Pi, at least on the surface. Uh, one of the first clues that things aren't going right, right uh, would be, you know, we talked about the fish in the pond, but there's also this fact that Richard Parker can't, he doesn't stay overnight on the island. He always goes back to the boat, which kind of seems a little mysterious to Pi, even though he just assumes now that Richard Parker would feel more comfortable in his den uh, and sleeping in his private space, his territory. Uh, so that is one of the little clues that Richard Parker would not uh, sleep on the island. And then the sinister uh, mystery of the fish disappearing in the pond, uh, that as well becomes a kind of creepy uh, occurrence that Pike doesn't quite um, understand yet. And then eventually Pi will find that one of the trees on the island has what it looks like fruit on it. Um, so this is sort of like where the biblical uh, tree of knowledge story becomes uh, part of the narrative here where Pi takes a piece of the fruit from the tree and uh, starts to open it and he makes a discovery. So he finds out that it's not a fruit at all but really a bunch of leaves all kind of tucked together uh, and then it was, it was not it was like kind of like a ball of leaves basically and he has to rip them off one by one each leaf getting smaller and smaller this ball of leaves and then eventually he makes the discovery so at the very end in the middle of this what he thought was going to be a fruit he finds a human tooth. Very bizarre. So what is a human tooth doing in a tree uh, wrapped up in a bunch of leaves? And then he takes down another uh, piece of fruit and then in each one there is a tooth, a human tooth. So he counts out 32 teeth in total from all the fruit from this tree. And this is like a hor horrifying discovery for Pi because he realizes what's going on and uh, it's kind of a loss of innocence. So it's the knowledge that he learns at that moment is the same knowledge that's going to expel him from paradise. Uh, so just like the biblical story, he learns something that um, makes him leave the island. So his discovery is, in fact, that the island is not this heavenly paradise. It's a carnivorous island. Uh, so it's a meat-eating island. So it's been eating the fish that have been uh, found in the freshwater pools, and it will digest them overnight. Uh, so the island itself becomes very acidic, almost like a stomach acid, right, gastric juices, and it burns and, and digests uh, whatever is on the surface of, its, uh, of the algae at nighttime. And uh, it's this kind of, he describes it as a predatory algae that turns highly acidic, and the ponds become vats of acid that, that digested the fish. So it reminds me a little bit of like a Venus flytrap, something like that, where, you know, you think it looks very innocent and beautiful on the surface, 
but really this is a carnivorous plant. So such, you know, that does exist in nature. We do have carnivorous plants, right? Venus flytraps catch flies or bugs that crawl into them and then they get digested by the plant. So it's not impossible uh, that that could be a, a something, but the teeth are kind of uh, weird. It suggests that, you know, somebody just like Pi landed on this island, thought they had, you know, entered heaven or found their salvation, fell asleep or died in the tree and maybe died of old age even, uh, but then the trees are more even a, a aesthetic themselves and will absorb whatever's in them eventually. Uh, so the tree sort of ate the person who was asleep in uh, the tree branches or who died in the tree branches. So the trees were carnivorous too, but at that much lower level of acidity, safe enough to stay in the night while the rest of the island seethe. But once the person had died and stopped moving, the tree must have slowly wrapped itself around the body and digested it. The very bones leached of nutrients until they vanished. In time, even the teeth would have disappeared. So the tree had absorbed this person who had died in its branches, and then each tooth is uh, wrapped up in these leaves. So with this knowledge, Pi decides that this island is not safe, not secure for himself. It's not a real paradise um, and that he can't live here. He calls it, um, he says, I prefer to set off and perish in search of my own kind than to live a lonely half-life of physical comfort and spiritual death on this murderous island. So that's page 313. So he calls it a lonely half-life of physical comfort and spiritual death. So it's not a true paradise, it's kind of an illusion of paradise. And for Pi, it's kind of a spiritual vacuum, a spiritual death that he would experience if he stayed in this environment. So he decides to not abandon Richard Parker, he needs him still. So both he and Richard Parker leave the island uh, and go back uh, into their lifeboat and set off again for the sea. Um, so it was kind of a sad experience for Pi to discover this island that he thinks is going to be beautiful and almost like a paradise, a heaven on earth, uh, but the reality of it kind of fails his expectations. Uh, and in his desperation he t returns to God. So. It's kind of possibly related to, you know, a test or trial of his faith. It could be that. Um, the symbolicness of, or symbolism of the island is, is a bit of a mystery, but we do have kind of biblical connotations of paradise, but maybe it's a false paradise, something that looks good on the surface, but is not what it appears. Um, the carnivorous thing is kind of interesting. Um, so a or veg vegetable island that becomes carnivorous could be a parallel for Pi himself, possibly, the transformation that he's gone through. Uh, so something that, you know, it looks green and, and uh, sort of innocent on the surface, but uh, there's this predatory nature of it. So it could relate to his own transformation as well. Or it could just be, you know, a figment of his imagination, you know, some bizarre thing that he invented, uh, part of the story. Okay, so uh, that's the island, kind of a mystery. If you have other interpretations of the island, uh, you can also add those uh, in if you write about this topic or uh, address the island as a symbol.